Hello all you crafty friends, this is Debbie from Craft Soup and I'm so glad to be back with you today. It's been about a week but I've been having some issues with my foot and I think I've got them resolved now. So if you don't know I had foot surgery and it's just a process to get it healed but I'm back on the road now and I'm here to show you the next step in making our wine bottle gnome. And if you remember this is the gnome that we are trying to make. It's built on a wine bottle for the support and in the last video we covered the wine bottle with a piece of fabric, we covered the bottom with a round piece of felt and we covered the top of the bottle with a round piece of felt, all of which came from the pattern that I provided to you in that video. The purpose of today's video is to prepare for one of the next steps and that is to create a beard for the gnome. And this is what we're going to try to accomplish today. And again, just to give you a quick look, that's what we're going for right there. Okay, so let's get started. For this step, you're going to need some fake fur with a fairly long pile on it and the pile is simply the length of the fur. I have some fur here. It's a big old piece of fur that's from Joanne's fabric. It's 65 inches wide. I think this particular piece was two yards in length. And the first thing I want to tell you about working with fur is that it's a little tricky, but if you take it slow and carefully, you'll be fine. Now there's a great video on YouTube about how to cut faux fur, but I'm going to take you through that today. So instead of using this big old piece of fur that hardly fits into the uh, view of my camera, I cut it down to size a little bit, but I'll make sure I cover all of the pieces of information that you need to have while you're working with your fur. Before we get started, I just do want to go over some of the tools we're going to need today. You're going to need a ruler and a pen. You're going to need some good cutting scissors and these are fabric cutting scissors and I'll give you a fair warning. My scissors are so dull. It's going to be a little painful to watch but we'll get through it. But uh, you'll, you're only going to need the tip of the scissors. You're not going to be using the whole blade of the scissors. So if there's any part of the scissors that needs to be sharp, it's going to need to be the very tip of the blades. You're going to need Believe it or not, some kind of a comb or pick or brush for the fur and that'll come a little bit later on. And then you're going to need either a hair dryer or a heat tool of some kind. And that's to get the wrinkles out of the fur. And again, I'll go over that in a little while. And I cut down a piece of sample fur to talk about. And I wanted to start on this side first because you'll probably be a little worried about some of what you see. First of all, this fur is a little bit unruly. It's got crinkles and wrinkles. If you look down here, you can see lines in it that don't come out when you comb it with your fingers. And it just doesn't look nice and smooth like this piece of fur does. And I'm going to show you how to make that happen. But that's going to be a step that comes a little bit later on. The first part of this video is really all about managing your fur and cutting it correctly. And I want to show you something that you need to be vigilant of even before you buy the fur. You want to make sure that the person that's cutting the fur behind the counter is aware that there is a special way to cut the fur. Now if they unroll the bolt and you tell me that you want one yard and they just take their scissors and start using their scissors and just start whacking along the one yard line, they're not going to be cutting it correctly because they're going to cut off this nice fringe and you're going to end up with a very blunt line, which is not the correct look that you want for your fur. You want the fur to attach to the back of the fabric all the way to the line. When you're looking at the back side, you don't want to see missing fur along this line. You want to see all of this fringe. Well, again, if they cut 
If they just start snipping and whacking off one yard of length or however much fur you want, they're going to snip all of that off. That happened to me the last time I bought fur and they got about this far in cutting it and I told them to stop and I actually had to teach the little gal how to do it. I didn't want to be mean but if she didn't do it correctly I was going to lose about two and a half inches of the fabric because I would have had to go back and correct her mistake. So let me show you the correct way to cut fur. This fur, like I said, is a smaller piece of the much larger piece of fur that I have here, but I did that for managing the video today. First of all, I'm just stretching this a little bit because for as expensive as this is, it's kind of disappointing that it's not better made on the, on the what do they call it, the bias where the vertical and the horizontal are at right angles, but it is what it is. By the way, at Joann's, this particular fur was, believe it or not, 50 bucks a yard. That's a lot of money, but I used a 60% off coupon and got it at a much cheaper price. Okay, a piece of fur that will create a beard needs to measure four inches wide and five inches long. And so, when we're looking at this, the length needs to travel in the direction of the beard, the way that the fur lays down. So it's five inches from here down here. And it's four inches across the fur. That means that when you're cutting the fur on the piece of fabric, you need to know exactly which way that fur is traveling. You need to make sure that the fur is traveling from top to bottom and that the fringe is down here. And now that's just to start with. Just make sure you have your orientation and know which way that fur is moving. Okay, I just flipped it over so that I know that the fur is still going from top to bottom and down here is the fringe. I'm going to turn it sideways a little bit because I want to show you the correct way to cut this fur. Like I said, when you start cutting fur, you do not want to just snip, 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 whack, 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 or you won't get the look you want. I've already pre-measured this so that each piece is four inches wide and five inches tall, and I've marked it on the back of the piece of fabric. These pen lines will never show on the front. All right, and now to do this correctly, I'm going to take the tip of my scissors, and remember they're very dull, but that's okay. For today's purposes, they'll work. The only part of the scissors that you need will be the tips of the two blades. So all you want to do is move the tips of the blades into the fabric and you want to place the tips of the blade between the fabric and the fur and make little snips and it's going to kind of go slow for a while but you can see that as I'm moving along I am not snipping the fur underneath. I am just snipping the backing of the fur. Bear with me, I've ordered a scissors sharpener that's gonna be here tomorrow, but I needed to get this video done today. So you can see how I'm just very carefully snipping only the backing of the fur, making sure I'm not snipping the fur itself. As I just separate what I've cut, you can see I'm leaving the fur intact on the next piece over. I'm not just whacking it off. And that's going to preserve the fur when I need it on this piece. Okay, so I think you probably get the idea here. I'm not going to take your time to show you how to go across the whole piece of fur that I, I'm working on here. I'm going to stop right up here at this line and then I'm going to change my direction of the fabric but there's all the fringe that belongs to the next row up. And now I'm going to start down here and using the same principle, I'm only using the tip of my scissors and I'm going up the length of this four by five little piece of fur that's going to become the beard of our darling little gnome. I have to say, these are so fun to make. I just enjoy making these so much. Each gnome, even though they are this made the same, each one has its own little personality, and I just love that. Okay, so I'm going to move this piece aside, but let's just turn this over and see what we got. All right, 
Now, this isn't the right dimension yet. We still need to cut this down into little panels. But I, before I did, I wanted to show you. You can see that there's a wrinkle in the fur right here. And just combing it through does not seem to solve the problem. So I'm going to get out my handy dandy heat tool. And you can use a hair dryer for this if you want. I'm going to blow the fur in the direction that the fur flows. And I need to have the air be fairly warm, almost hot, because that's what's going to remove the wrinkles. And I'm just going to be patient. So I'm going to start that now and you won't hear me talking for a second. Okay, and let's check this out and see what it looks like now. Okay, as you can see now, it's really nice and fluffy and straight and the wrinkles are gone. If the wrinkles aren't quite gone yet, you can just continue with a little bit more warm air on it until it achieves the fluffiness and the straightness in the fur that you want. But I'm really happy with this. It looks like a beautiful little gnome's beard. And I'm sorry for the glare, but I hope you can see that those wrinkles just came out beautifully. All right, let's turn this back over. And on the back, we have one section that's four inches wide by five inches long. This section is four inches wide by five inches long. But this section is five inches wide by five inches long. And the reason for that is because I gave it some extra room to cut on the edge of this fabric when I bought it. There's this really thick, mm, unusable section on the selvage that you'll need to cut off. So I allowed an extra inch for that. So from here to those dots is four inches. So I'm gonna take my scissors, and again, using that principle of only using the tip of the scissors, I'm just gonna go right down that edge with the tip of my scissors, only cutting the backing of the fabric. I'm not cutting any of the fur underneath it because I don't wanna ruin it. And this part that I'm cutting off is not really usable, so I'm, I'll end up throwing that away. Now the fur that you buy may or may not have this rough edge, but if it does, I just recommend that you just take it off and throw it away because it's got a different kind of look and texture and thickness to it. All right, you can see that as I pull that away, I still have fringe on this end. That's great. I don't care about this. Off it goes. If your beard is not perfectly, uh, I don't want to say square, but if the lines aren't perfectly vertical and horizontal, you can do a little stretching of it just to kind of straighten that out. And uh, I think you'll be a little happier with it. Now I'm just going to go ahead and cut one section, which is four inches wide and five inches tall. And that is going to be the beard that we work with today. This does go slow, but if your scissors are sharp, it's a lot better. I tried my little cutter bee scissors on here. They're kind of a fine tipped craft scissor, but they didn't work so much. So I went back to my old dull sewing scissors. All right, notice when I pull it apart, each side is still fringed. There are no blunt edges where the hair has been cut off bluntly. Okay, I'm gonna just put this one aside for a minute. And here is the piece of fur that we're going to need for the beard. And I'm just going to comb it out a little bit. There it is. Now you'll notice it's fairly rectangular in shape. And 
the beard on the finished gnome kind of comes down in mm, a curve shape though with kind of a point on the bottom. And that's what we're gonna go for. So how do we make that happen? Keeping in mind that the top of the beard is up here and the fringe is down here, we're gonna flip it over from side to side. We know that this beard is four inches wide. So I'm gonna take my pen and I'm just gonna measure across halfway down at the bottom and just make a little tick mark right there. Then I'm just gonna eyeball what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna round out that corner right there. Can, I don't know if you can see that, I'll draw it darker. And then I'm gonna do it on the other side. I'm gonna aim for about right there. And I'm just gonna round out that corner. Just do the best you can. It's a very forgiving part of the project. The fur hides anything that's not exactly symmetrical. That's pretty good right here, but you know, don't sweat it if it's not exactly perfect. Now again, to cut off that rounded corner, what you wanna do is stick those scissors in between the backing and the fur, because remember, when you cut this little piece off, which is gonna be waste, you still wanna have the fringe underneath it. Let me start over here on this side. I think it'll be easier, because then I can hold on to the part that I'm going to throw away. I'm just gonna follow the line I drew, keeping the tips of my scissors between the backing and the fur. When I think I might have gotten too deep into the fur, I stop and reposition my scissors. And look at that. I still have all of that fringe that's part of his fur that's on the underneath side. Let's do the other corner. Let's go slow. Don't start cutting until you've got the tip of your scissors up underneath the, the backing. No need to rush. Sometimes it's a little hard, but once you get started, it becomes easier. I'm being very careful not to go down deep into that fur. Just keeping my tips of my scissors right there underneath the backing. All right, let's comb this fur out and see what we got. And there you go, we have a gnome beard. And that gnome beard, when it's time to apply this to the bottle, we'll find the back seam of the bottle and we'll turn that toward the back. And this fur will fit way up here at the top of the fabric around the shoulders. And that's what becomes the beard on the gnome. So we'll cover the application of this beard in another video. But for now, that is how you get a beard for your wine bottle gnome. If you need to, you can go ahead and use your blow dryer or your heat gun to get out any wrinkles that still remain. And then you can use a brush or comb to comb it out and fluff it up. And just get that little beard ready to stick on that Nomi. My friends, today we learned a lot of important things about cutting faux fur, starting with making sure that when you buy the faux fur off of a bolt, that the person behind the cutting counter at the fabric store knows that they cannot just whack off the piece of fabric that you want, but rather they need to use that same technique of using the tips of the scissors to go across the width of the faux fur so that they don't end up with a blunt piece of fabric. So we learned that we learned how to cut the fabric between the fur layer and the backing layer by using only the tips of our shears. And then we also learned where the faux fur is going to sit when we finally place it on the bottle. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I know this was a little painful to watch uh, because of my dull scissors. I'll try to do better in the future for that. But I hope that you got a good sense of how to get this beard ready because we're kind of coming down now, the mid stretch of putting this little gnome together and uh, it's gonna get more fun as we go along. My friends, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it your thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell 
as well so that you can get notified of videos when they're published. All right, my friends, it's a beautiful day outside, not too hot, not too cold. So I'm going to upload this video and then enjoy the rest of the day. And I hope you do too. Bye for now, and I'll see you again soon.